Hey there YouTube, I'm Joe, you're watching my channel Ink and Iron, and uh, this video series is about typewriters, specifically how to take a new typewriter, or you know, new used typewriter, and um, restore it back to functioning. Um, this won't be like a one-size-fits-all kind of demonstration, as typewriters have hundreds of moving parts and potentially many different variety of things wrong with them, so I'm going to try and keep it as general as possible and show you um, some very basic techniques to restore, you know, as much of the normal function to a typewriter as possible with the fewest number of tools and skills needed as possible. So we are going to use this right here. This is my Underwood Leader. Bought it on uh, OfferUp for 60 bucks, so not bad. Don't overspend on an old typewriter, especially if it's not fully functioning. Um, basically what I ask sellers is, do the keys move? As in like, do these, do these keys actually move? And you can see they do. This one's <laughs> still a little sticky in some keys. Got a lot of the function back though, pretty easily and quickly. I'm gonna show you how I did that. Um, but this first video is going to be repair uh, assessment and just like kind of diagnosing as much as possible what's wrong with the typewriter or what's not functioning and um, then we'll move on to cleaning procedures and um, some more advanced repair work uh, later on down the line so hope you enjoy uh, and i hope that uh, you have success with your typewriters if you have specific questions about an underwood leader uh, let me know. I'm going to try and provide as much information as possible about how to identify your own machine and, um, you know, get, get started doing this yourself if that's something you're interested in. Okay. Anyway, on to uh, the video shot last week um, when I was just evaluating this machine to see what it needed. So, hope you enjoy. Okay, and here I am at... Uh my shop where I work. It is a wood shop, so you're gonna see a lot of dust. But here is the Underwood Leader. And just taking a general visual inventory first. You can turn these knobs on the side. These are the platen knobs. And we can see a bunch of little individual spaces on there. That is from keys striking the rubber. So actually hitting it through the, uh, the paper. Here's your paper bale. Check and make sure that this works. So this um, turns on in this position and removes the pressure of rollers underneath here that actually grab the paper and advance it uh, precisely. So that's functioning. You should see it release. Cool. Here's our uh, carriage release. So this is gonna move, allow the carriage to move freely back and forth. That's uh, working. Whoops. Sorry, filming with one hand here. This is the return arm. Should have sort of a dead spot at the beginning and then move us back to the start of our page, which is dictated by, I've got some tab sets back here. So you can see a rack gear right here. Just, uh, I haven't figured out if they're supposed to be pushed down and move or pull up and move. They're not, uh, not very smooth at the moment, but I know they move. Come on. Oh, it's because I'm <laughs> fully extended. Have that carriage release. Now I can move this. Come on. Maybe, maybe not. Move the other one. Apparently not. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Tilted it this way. Interesting. So this will dictate how far we can move. Oops, this way. Right, I'm hitting the space bar. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that is not acting as a margin. Good to know. Oh, maybe it wasn't locked in all the way. Double check. Nope. Okay, so this should be acting as a margin. So. This carriage should stop where this tab is, but we can just move it over. 
At least I believe that's how that's supposed to work because I don't have a tab button on here. Okay, so we'll have to look at that later. Um, what else? Platen rolls. Here. It's gunky, but our draw band still in good shape. Feels like a synthetic cord, which is probably why it's fine. We're gonna hit that carriage release and move this over. And there's our serial number. If you're curious, you can look that up on the typewriter database. No buttons on the side, just some gunk we'll have to clean up. Okay, it looks all right. We do have a ribbon in here, although I don't know if we'll be able to use it. Make sure before you open the lid that you're not gonna, you know, knock into your return arm here. Like, I should move this over. There we go. All right, most ribbon covers you just pull up. Every once in a while you'll have a button, um, but for the most part you just pull them up. Sometimes they're on a hinge, sometimes they pop off. But uh, yeah, let's see. This is sitting up a little bit. Um, okay, ribbon working. I happen to know on this machine that this is the ribbon advance. So if we turn that, you can see our ribbon moving. Oh, and then look right there. See that grommet? That grommet, as I, as I continue to turn this knob, it's gonna catch, catches, and it sends it into reverse. So now it's gonna feed the other way. Perfect. That's functioning just fine. Okay. Now let's see if we can type anything here, because all the keys look to be in order. Let's try a Q. That's working. W. Oh. Very slow return. E. Even worse. R. Yeah, alright. We got some sticky... Very sticky keys here. Oh yeah, look at that. A lot of times what's happening with that is that someone went and lubricated this segment comb, which is not something you need to do. If you're new to typewriters, this part right here does not require lubricant. What it needs to be is perfectly clean, and that's it. This is why you have a case that comes with your typewriter. This is why you cover your typewriters when not in use, so that you don't gum up this comb because all it needs to be is perfectly clean. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Here is a, uh, what is this, touch control? Except there's nothing in there. Interesting, this appears to be a vestigial part. Um, if you know better than me, put in the comments. Okay, so all the keys are fairly sticky, so that's where we're gonna have to start with this machine. And then uh, one thing I also noticed while working this back and forth Usually, when you come to the end of the page, ding, you're supposed to get a ding here. So that's weird. I'm not sure why the bell isn't working. Um, let's make sure there is a bell. Yep, here we go. So, yeah, we'll have to figure out why that's not dinging um, while we're down here. These feet, if they are squishy, and appear to be, you know, in reasonable shape, then uh, that's a good sign. Sometimes these will be worn out and you can get new rubber, but uh, it's better to not need that kind of thing. A little bit of scotch tape there. Okay, honestly, underneath here, it looks pretty clean. So that's a good sign. We're gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning in here. These very fine parts that have gunked up a little. But overall, not too bad. And honestly, the body on here is pretty well preserved. Um, this machine did come with a case. Let me whirl around here. Here's the case. Fairly clean, fairly good shape. Honestly, I'd call it very good. Um, even the spring latches on here are working. So yeah, very little to do there. All right, I guess the last thing we're gonna do is load up some paper and try to type, but I gotta put the phone down for a sec to load it. Okay, got our paper loaded in here. That's interesting. That looks like it's lined up to type directly over top the paper bale, which is super unusual. <laughs> okay, how am I, am I meant to avoid that? 
So I figured out if you tilt these, that's how you get the tab to move. Come on. Now that I have to do it on camera, it's not gonna happen. Keep forgetting, I'm gonna move my thing out there. All right. Okay, that took care of it. So we just had to set our tab to an appropriate point that's not striking directly onto here. Are there any marks? No, no marks from previous people doing that, so that's good, I suppose. I'm not sure where line um, spacing is. It appears to just be one space, but I guess we'll find out. All right, the Q key was working. Let's use that. Okay, let's try a shift Q. Okay, pretty good alignment. Do we have any other working keys? P? P is working. Lined up. Let's try a shift P. Okay. And yeah, shift. This one's a basket shift machine, so you can see the whole segment, the whole type basket, as it were, drops down. Oh, and then one other fork. Look at this. If I just touch this, it acts as a space bar. So I'm not sure what the heck this is, but uh, we will find out when we start tearing this machine down and, and really getting to getting to clean on this thing. Um, what I'm gonna do first, since there is hope for this machine, the type is well aligned, right? This ribbon is shot, but that's easily replaced. What's important here is that everything is, is in line. The bottoms of the letters meet up, and then the descending portions of the letters are all descending from the same height. So yeah, it's looking like things are well aligned. Um, more than likely things are just dirty. Um, and I'm pretty sure that someone lubricated this in the past, which is why we're getting this stickitude. Because a lot of people will mistakenly lubricate this thinking that it'll help the motion uh, no, no, it will not. Only extreme cleanliness will help it. And I also think that it's lubricant here because the actual carriage is sliding free. It's not like they tried to lubricate that. That must have been functioning just fine for them. So, yeah, just a little bit of misguided repair work has led us here. Um, one concern I had was this pull that advances this guy. Let me see here. Let's see. Oh, we are double spaced. That's weird. All right, I'm gonna have to find the line spacing at some point. But uh, yeah, I think first cleaning step is gonna be this guy right here. This is an airline. It's hooked up to a big old compressor and I'm literally just gonna blast this thing out and um, yeah, I think after that, uh, I'm gonna use some crud cutter. This is pretty good, but you can use any natural um, degreaser and cleaner. Dilute it with water, and uh, that'll be good for the exterior parts here. We're gonna make sure you don't soak it and that it's not dripping down onto the metal components inside, but we're gonna controlled scrub this and do a nice controlled scrub on the exterior of the case, because uh, yeah, these guys get dingy over time, so that's about it. Uh, next time you see me, I'll be blowing this thing out and uh, starting the cleaning work.